Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Ask Mark and welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. So Ask Mark is our scuba diving Q&A where I, Mark, a former scuba diving instructor, do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. So if you do have any scuba questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video and we'll get to it as soon as possible. Uh, I try and type out an answer as soon as I see them and the community as well. Uh, they're always watching the comment section and, uh, and answering questions, which is awesome. Thank you for that, backing me up. Um, and so yeah if you do have any questions pop it down in the comment section under below and if you see any questions uh, that are unanswered or you have your two cents by all means pop them down in the conversation below this week i'm answering a question from philippe uh, about the aqualung helix regulator So Philippe says, hello Mark, uh, love your videos, keep them rolling in, I shall. What do you think of the Aqualung regulator, the Helix? 99% of my diving is done in the Red Sea, and if not going to dive for a long time, over three months, should I remove my transmitter from the regulator? Last, are there any different compasses for North and South hemispheres? Thanks. Uh, okay, so three questions there. Uh, first of all, I love the Helix uh, and its predecessor, which was the core. Um, I think they're a great balance of performance and cost. Uh, for diving in the Red Sea, they'll be perfect. Uh, for storage, as long as they're depressurized, there's no real need to remove a transmitter. Uh, it just kind of increases the chances of cross-threading the screw and contaminants from getting in. Um, and yes, you do get north and south declined compasses, but many are quite broad and still cover most of the globe. So uh, yeah, yes, you do technically, but it's not the end of the world if you take some uh, northern hemisphere compasses into parts of the southern hemisphere. It's complicated, I'll talk about it in a second. Um, so the helix regulator, yeah, uh, I loved the uh, the core and uh, the core, did they just call it the core pro? I forget, uh, I'll put it up here. Um, but the helix is uh, like the the successor to, uh, to the core. And yeah, it's a very WYSIWYG regulator, um, very Goldilocks does everything that you need. And yeah, yeah for the Red Sea, perfect are there lighter regulators out there yes um are there like higher performance regulators out there yes but as soon as you veer off then you end up spending a bit more money and yeah the helix yeah great tough you get the helix and then you get the helix pro um i forget the exact difference um now i think it's basically more cold water um uh, performance uh, if it's anything different I'll, uh, I'll put it up here but or, or I'll just list the the main differences here yeah you get the helix and then you get the helix pro they have a different color um, uh, purge button front cover but there are some slight like internal mechanical differences I think it's mainly comes down to cold water performance but if you're diving in the Red Sea the regular version is is perfectly fine as far as transmitters um God, do i still have my transmitter um then if it's attached to your regulator i wouldn't worry too much the main thing is about if you have it i'm gonna look for it um if you have it fitted to your uh, your first stage then it's it's more here we go uh it's more rigid and you run the risk of damaging both the first stage and your uh, your transmitter. Um, so if you have it fitted just like that in storage, then just make sure that your regulator is is fitted so that there's no like force on the transmitter because once you get past the the metal bit most of this is plastic and you don't want to damage that by uh, by twisting it that's why a lot of divers put them on like a six inch or 15 centimeter high pressure hose just because it allows um it allows for a bit of bend and flex so you fit you need swivel pins at this point um because you now need 
o-ring seals between the transmitter and the hose uh, but you then attach it onto the first stage and then that just gives it a bit more bend and flex so if you put it in a bag or however you're storing your regulator even if there is a small amount of force being applied to it it's not the end of the world you're you're not so like risking like damaging that but by removing it then you're increasing the chances of one you're exposing the o-rings to ozone uh, which can uh, degrade o-rings and then when you go to put it back on you run the risk of cross threading it which can damage either the first stage the hose or the uh, the transmitter or all of them um, so if you're not too like hose thread savvy uh, i'd just be a little bit careful with that one so the only benefit to removing your transmitter is yeah if wherever you're storing it if it's a particularly tight regulator bag and you feel that there is some kind of force acting on it um then yeah as soon as they're depressurized the um uh, the chip on the inside basically tells it to go into a dormant mode so after a minute or two they just deactivate to uh, to save battery um but there's no real benefit to removing it from a um a, a depressurized regulator if it's pressurized one you'll probably struggle to uh, to remove it because the pressure will push on those threads um and you you'll probably get to a point where it just starts hissing uh but don't do that uh just depressurize your regulators um and uh, and yeah as long as there's no force acting on the transmitter i wouldn't worry too much about removing it uh there's no great uh benefits to uh, to doing that as far as compasses i could never find my stuff they um they do have north and south compasses out there um if you shop around enough you'll probably find like nh and sh for north and southern hemisphere uh but compasses are pretty good nowadays and some even have a map i think it is sunto i think i've definitely seen a map on one of their manuals that basically shows the um uh the, the areas covered by their northern and southern compasses and they're pretty darn good so even if you dip a bit below the um uh, the equator it's not this definite line that basically just northern hemisphere compasses just suddenly go haywire um they'll still point mostly north um but yes they uh, they, they do have north and southern hemisphere scuba compasses they tend to be quite limited to wherever you are if you live in the normal if you live in the northern hemisphere then chances are the compass that you're buying unless otherwise stated is probably going to be a northern hemisphere compass um, depending on the website or depending on the dive center they can probably get hold of them uh, it is normally listed they're normally included in our price guide um, just because it isn't listed on a website uh, or it's not on the shelf of a dive center doesn't mean that they can't get it in uh, it just means that they've looked at it and gone hmm, what's the chances of someone wanting a southern hemisphere compass um, pretty low mm, I'm not going to waste my money investing on that and then it's just going to sit on the shelf for three years so um, now if you need a southern hemisphere compass and you're in the northern hemisphere or vice versa have a chat with your, your dive center and just go oh hey i'm diving here um can i get my hands on a such and such compass and they'll go yeah it'll be however long it takes them to get a certain piece of equipment in um some websites may have both uh if they have the stock and um a willing turnover then yeah they'd probably be uh, be happy in um, in holding them in stock but yeah just have a look for nh or sh that tends to be the um um, the denominator what they uh, what they call it uh, but yes they do exist uh, but it's not it's not a strict line straight across the equator um, if you have a northern hemisphere they do spend uh, they do continue to work for a fair amount of time below the uh, the equator they're, they're pretty good nowadays yeah and the um, the ones on your your dive computer a lot of them have a declination setting uh, which you can change and adjust you um, uh, you recalibrate them 
when they're um, uh, when they're in country. It's always a weird, like wavy motion, and it's quite hard for them to um, uh, to display it on the screen. You usually have like this figure of eight. Um, some are quite good, and you um, you you rotate them. I think it's a lot of Sunto computers do this where you rotate them in one axis and then you rotate them in another axis and it shows you a line like filling up so you know how well you're doing. Others, you have to do a weird figure of eight um, and, and that motion is quite hard to convey on a flat 2D screen. Um, but yeah, then you, you recalibrate the compass wherever you're diving. Um, and yes, yeah, some computer digital compasses, you can set the declination as well. Um, otherwise, yeah, helix regulators, I have no issue with. Um, for what you're paying, you get a lot of regulator. Uh, removing the transmitter, you can do, only if you really require it. Um, I've never seen it as much of an issue uh, leaving it on unless it's in a particularly tight, um, a regulator bag or there's some force being applied to it that could lead to damage and um, yeah north south hemisphere compasses definitely exist um, any other questions by all means pop them down in the comment section underneath this video use the ask mark hashtag if you do see any questions underneath then by all means let them know the answer if you get to the question first uh, otherwise remember to head over to the website scubadivermag.com check out all the awesome things that we do over there subscribe to the channel here on youtube Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.